When you think about the hacking community, you probably think about guys in hoodies key mashing in a green on black terminal. While that's exactly what I'm doing right now as I work this script, we are in the first place people. This is the story of those people, and particularly a subset of them. Now, this is a relatively new topic for my channel, so I expect to see some new audience. If you're among them, welcome. I hope you're comfortable and will enjoy the video. If so, consider joining this little thing by subscribing and entering the matrix room. Okay, now let's start. The hacking culture is founded on creating alternative spaces, valuing individualism, creativity, non-conformity, and being tightly related to the free software scene, openness, collaboration, and sense of community. These strong values naturally attracted people who were more aligned with them, and particularly people who felt excluded from traditional spaces and social norms. For queer hackers, computers are an escape, somewhere where no one cares of what's in your pants. Somewhere where you can decide how to express yourself, leaving behind the bigotry of the outside world. Some of us are lucky enough to have someone IRL close and accepting, a group of people where to be oneself. But for others, this is the only place where they don't have to live in someone else's clothes. Additionally, the free as in freedom nature of the hacking culture, as a space where everyone can help and contribute to the communal good, makes these spaces accepting and inclusive of people from different backgrounds and identities. As everyone can contribute, this culture of respect and tolerance has made the hacking community a welcoming space for people of all genders and sexual orientations, who have found support and solidarity within it. This connection is also literal, as a trans person is hacking their body to achieve their true self, those of you who programmed at least once can relate, that thrilling feeling of being able to control something you previously deemed not modifiable, even with some sort of magical or divine property, and realizing it's just a machine at your service. That's got a lot in common with the themes of medical transition and bodily autonomy, and the claims free software activists are applicable to trans bodies with minimal tweaking. Note that bodily autonomy is not limited to trans healthcare, the most known example is abortion. I'm not gonna elaborate on this topic here, but there's a great video that I linked below. Overall, the connection between queerness and the hacking slash Linux community is based on shared values of individualism, creativity, collaboration, and acceptance. This connection is mutually benefiting. As the hacking community grows more diverse and creative, the queer community can create safe digital spaces with free resources. This connection is not something new. As I anticipated at the start, this strong bond has always characterized our community, even unconsciously, and this is beautifully shown by the story of Xenia, the alternative Linux mascot. I'm gonna be synthetic here, but I'll leave a bunch of links in description. Basically, in 1996 Alan Mackey proposed an alternative to Tux as the Linux mascot, a fox wearing glasses and a Linux shirt. As Tux prevailed for its simple and cute design, Xenia was quickly forgotten, only to be rediscovered years later by a Twitter user who drew fan art of this character. Xenia was originally thought of being male, but this fan art presented her as a girl fox. The original author reached out and embraced the misunderstanding, viewing it as perfectly fitting with all his hacker friends who transitioned in the meantime. Just like that, she became a trans rights symbol, and a brilliant way to represent our community, made of strong, independent, smart, but also caring, inclusive and supportive people, with all of our quirks and peculiarities that makes the hacking scene so cool. Although the Linux community can seem toxic on the surface, with figures like most of Linux YouTubers who are heavily right-leaning, the actual people who make up this community are mostly extremely accepting and supportive, as hacking is a beautiful thing that is moved by love and not hate. Most rightist alleged hackers are actually just tech brothers who are trying to sell you their latest crypto shit or just get you in the alt-right shenanigans. This is quickly proven by the huge variety of spaces where the community thrives Mastodon, Peertube, Lemmy, and other free social networks which are all openly progressive and left-leaning in nature, 
as well as the beautiful world of shared computers in the Tildiverse. Which if you don't know I urge you to check out, especially if you are learning Linux right now or you want to get started, although this doesn't mean you shouldn't if you're an expert user. Okay, I'll round it up for now, as I want to get something out quickly and this topic excites me a lot so I can't be patient at all. I wrote all of this in one sitting, so it may be imprecise. If you'd like me to articulate further some of the concepts mentioned in this video, or more in general to do more of this kind of mini video essays, please feel free to comment or ask in our matrix room. Thanks a lot for watching, I love you all, subscribe and share to spread the revolution.